Hello guys, welcome back to my world of fragrance. I have been tagged and I often get tagged, but I often don't do tag videos because I'm always so late with the tag wave and you have to be quick and all of that. So I'm filming this as fast as I can after being tagged by Scented Moments. Drow, thank you so much for tagging me. So let's get into this one. So please remember everybody, I am not discussing geopolitics here. I am talking about scented water. It's just fragrance, okay? We're allowed to have our different tastes, our different opinions. And hate is a very strong word, but I'm gonna start with the fragrances that I hate, and then we're gonna end on a high note with the fragrances that I absolutely love. So again, hate is a very, very strong word for me. There are not very many fragrances that I actually hate, and I don't even think that I could say that I hate these fragrances straight up, but there's just something about them where we're kind of on the wrong foot at the moment. So the first one is, and I've said this before in previous videos, Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. There's something about Le Mal that just screams at me. There are just too many people that wore this fragrance in high school. They were like seniors and it just gives me like locker room jock, trying to be cool <laughs> kind of vibes. It just does. And I cannot help it because if you think about Le Mal, a beautiful amber floral fragrance, it's actually a really nice fragrance if you looked at it independently. So again, I don't hate it, but my associations just being bombed by this fragrance, having it everywhere, having loads of people wear it, just puts me off the fragrance. And that leads me to my next one, which somebody had said that this one was basically a surge off take on Le Mal. And I used to like this fragrance. It is that amber floral, but with a little added oud to it, a la Serge Off, and then that whole Serge Off wowza explosion to begin with. It dries down floral ambery with that little bit of oud, and it is Alexandria the second. Ever since I read this comment, and this is a good reason to not listen to any reviews, to not listen to other people's comments, just follow your own nose and Try not to get influenced by too many people as well. If you have trusted reviewers, maybe listen to them. But it is very hard to unsmell something once it's been pointed out to you. So this just reminds me of Le Mal now, uh, Alexander II. I can't unsmell it. Help, somebody help me. And that means it's also affected my relationship with Alexander II. So these are just two surge offs that I'm no longer really gonna be recommending because why would I if I pretty much can't wear them myself? So I could have definitely picked some fragrances to feature that are already divisive, that may not have such high ratings on the different forums <laughs> to keep myself safe. But of course, I'm just gonna throw myself to the wolves and talk about the most hyped fragrances out there. So my next choice under the hate category is Delina. Parfum de Mali, Delina, this musky, rosy, hot mess of a generic perfume. I'm so sorry, but it just smells so generic to me. It, it just does. I know it's very, very popular out there and a lot of people love it. It does not mean that I have anything personally against you. Just remember that it is just uh, the way that I feel about this scent. It is just a lot of money for what it is, very generic smelling to me, and yeah, don't understand the hype. Now the next fragrance that I hate, and you're gonna find maybe a little bit of a trend of what I dislike, things that smell generic. And this next one, the Valentino fragrance, I don't even remember the name of it, but it was just so awful. It was probably one of the worst releases I've smelled in a very long time. Just smells like some hot mess of a, sweet like candy thing tin can lab generic cannot pick out anything that smells remotely like a real ingredient and it's the one with the lady gaga face on it so that was quite disappointing you know i would think lady gaga would actually smell the perfumes that she would put her face on and her name on considering she's so um 
different in personality, but hey, maybe it was just her publicist that signed her on to this commercial deal and it was a lot of money. So good for you, Gaga. I just don't like this perfume. I couldn't even describe it to you besides just extremely, extremely generic, disappointing, nothing perfume artistry about this. Like, sorry. Okay, so let's just say that Le Mal and Alexandra are one because the scents are so similar. And um, <laughs> let's talk about Alien, okay? So Alien in itself, if you look at, you know, the components of Alien, how Alien is made up, it being a jasmine-centric fragrance, I love jasmine, I should actually be a wearer of Alien, you know, if you look at all of that, all of these factors, but I simply could never ever get myself to wear Alien because of the associations that I have with it. Again, very personal, but too many people wear Alien. Too many people wore Alien years and years ago. Too many people wore Alien back in high school, not to mention now. And it's not a fragrance that you can really escape. When somebody's wearing Alien, you can smell them. This is the risk with a fragrance that is powerful. You know, everyone is out here trying to get powerful longevity and all of this. But the problem is if somebody does not like your scent, they might just hate you, you know, because <laughs> they can't escape you. So yeah, this is a case for wearing subtle fragrances because if somebody doesn't like it, they're not going to be affected. But Alien, yes, it was like out in the clubs, everyone was wearing Alien. In the school hallways, everybody was wearing Alien. Alien is always there at every department store. There's just a huge commercial of it. Bottles that, like, <laughs> I've had enough, okay? I've had enough. Okay, so the next one. Uh, BR540. I have had huge bottles of this one, the 200 mils of both the EDP and the Extrait. This used to be a signature scent of mine before the hype, like many years ago. Loved it, couldn't get enough of it. It's a very versatile scent, very interesting scent profile. Check out my review of it that will be up here or in the description. And yeah, I got rid of my larger bottles. I'm holding on to the smaller 75 mil versions of both the x and the EDP just in case I one day change my mind because they are pricey. I'm hoping that the hype dies down with this one. And again, it's it's that whole, I smell it everywhere. I smell it everywhere. You cannot escape this scent. You cannot escape the clones of this scent, the different iterations, the versions. And each day, more and more versions of this scent are being released by different brands, like different takes of this exact same scent profile. And I'm tired, okay? I'm tired. I... Like I said, used to love the scent, that uh, spun cotton candy, saffron, sweet, but classy, expensive vibes. <laughs> it's a sad one. It really is a sad one. Help. Everyone else, stop wearing this so I can wear it, okay? <laughs> and then lastly, again, hate is a very strong word. I don't have strong reactions to fragrances where I'm like, ooh, like... Unless, again, it's generic. I think I'm just, I'm just allergic to generic. But this one is not generic. So it's just an example of different ways of reacting to different types of scent profiles. And I'm a person who enjoys oud. But this particular oud from the brand Lorga, upon first sniff, and I remember it still, <laughs> there are not a lot of perfumes that I have this kind of, uh, you know, down in the gut. I don't want to say repulsed, but you know, like down in the gut, not liking it thing. And it's the oud from Lorga. It's like a gourmand oud. All of these fragrances have like this kind of sweet nuttiness about them. But this gourmand oud was just weird to me. It was just a lot of different things going on and not working out. Maybe the idea was good. The execution, not so much for me. Um, <laughs> So that's all I can say about that. That's one that is, you know, a little bit different. And this is like an expensive brand, a luxury brand. A lot of the ones I mentioned are from luxury brands. So it just goes to show just because you're paying more doesn't mean that it necessarily smells great or amazing or better than something that wasn't at that price point. 
So let's turn this around, guys. I'm tired of um, just complaining. Don't like to do that. So next fragrance is one that I love. We're gonna start out with Fille en Aiguille by Serge Lutens. I've said it before, this is one of my favorite fragrance brands. This is The Girl in Pine Needles. It is walking amongst pine trees in the late fall or in the winter and a little bit of incense there in the background. I do love fragrances that bring me to a place, a time, evoke emotions. I don't wear fragrances purely out of functionality, so that's something that I look for and that's my personal taste. But yeah, every time I spray this fragrance, come back to it, I'm like, how could I have ever forgotten you? It's just like, there aren't very many fragrances that compare to the feeling that I get from this fragrance. I think it's more the feeling that I'm addicted to the notes, yes, the composition, but the feeling that this evokes is something that nobody can take from me. <laughs> so, and yeah, again, I don't smell anyone wearing this around me, so it's not something that would ever get ruined for me. Unless this video blows up and this channel blows up and everyone's talking about this. Or I think Sebastian talks about this, actually, the perfume guy. Sebastian, stop telling everybody about this, okay? Because I love it <laughs> and I don't want everybody to wear it. Either way, I do think that this is a fragrance that will never become that popular because it is one of those, and all of the Lutons are like this. Either you connect with them individually on an individual personal level or you don't. And that's what I love about this brand, okay? We are never all gonna be wearing the same Lutons. There is no BR540 from Lutons, okay? Everyone has their own specific choice. So the next fragrance kind of makes me laugh because Persilase, who I love watching on here, is probably the only person who should be talking about perfume on YouTube, um, <laughs> he actually kind of bashes this one a lot. So it makes me laugh whenever he does because it just goes to show that everyone has different tastes, okay? Even people that you might normally agree with can have individual fragrances that they disagree with you on. But I just don't know why I love this one, but I just do, it's the Terre d'Hermes flanker, the vetiver one, Eau Intense Vetiver. And this is the refillable 30 ml bottle that I like to carry around. And my friend Anya actually bought this one as well on my recommendation. Hi Anya, if you're watching. It is just a vetiver that for me is easy to get away with because it can come off as fresh, but it also has this spicy, it has the spicy, rooty quality to it. I do like the regular Terre d'Hermes, but that one is also like widely popular. So I think I enjoy the flanker more because it has that vetiver amped up. Is it more spicy than the original? I don't remember. I haven't worn the original in a long time, but this flanker, this version, there's just something addictive about this to me. It smells like nature. It smells like walking out in nature and you're feeling the soil, you're feeling the rootiness of the vetiver. It's like just, taking a lovely walk for me. And it just evokes the climate that I'm in as well. So it's as if I'm out taking a walk near where I live in some park out here in England. And I, I just really enjoy that. It's not like a, a walk out in the tropics. It's a walk out in this kind of brisk Northern European weather. So yeah, check that out. Let me know your opinions on all of these, by the way, down below, good or bad. I don't care. We are here to share. We're here to have a laugh about it. It's just perfume. So the next one is to redeem Maison Francis Jeanne. So I'm gonna come back with another one. And this is Oud Silk Mood, which I to this day love. To this day is my favorite Oud from the MFK line. Yes, these are very, very pricey. They are in that luxury fragrance category. They don't even wanna be classified as niche actually. They're, they're just like, we're, we're mass appealing and that's cool, and they pulled out their fragrances that are on that more daring, niche side that not a lot of people would appreciate as much as the masses, like with Baccarat Rouge. So Oud Silk Mood is still to this day my favorite Oud from MFK. I wear this a lot. I wear this in the summer, in the winter, all year round. It's just a nice, clean Oud for me. Satin Mood I also have, but it's just, a, like that one is just, Sometimes it puts me off, you know, it's it's like a mood dependent fragrance. Whereas this one, I'm always in the mood for silk mood. Go figure. Sorry about the lighting changing. It is out of my control. I'm also not the most professional YouTuber, as you know, but let's carry on. So the next love that I have is 
again, different. I'm picking very different types of fragrances. This one is Rose Barbar. And I went in to smell this fragrance when I heard about Chandler Burr, the New York Times fragrance critic. I believe it was New York Times. You know, world-renowned fragrance critic Chandler Burr talk about Rose Barbar. And I had to go into Galin and smell it. You know, it's not like if it's good enough for Chandler, it's good enough for me. But if Chandler likes it, I'll try it. And if I love it, then great. <laughs> so that was the case with this one. And I waited for the packaging change so that I could get this new customized thing. You're like paying extra for all of this. So it was more because I have a YouTube channel that I need to keep up with the packaging. Otherwise, maybe I would have just gotten the old square bottles or whatever. But I did kind of enjoy the experience. You can pick out the top. You can pick out... Uh, this ribbon you can customize it. I have my name engraved in the back. So, you know It, it was one of those days and so Rose Barbar For me, there's no other rose out there that smells like this rose. It it just has this unique quality. It has that Guerlain upscale mm, 1930s Paris vibe. It's got this fenugreek and unique honey accord in it as well with this rose so it, to me, this is just elegance. It's just a very elegant fragrance. I can wear this whenever. I didn't get it that long ago and I've actually made a dent in it, which I've got lots and lots of perfumes, people, okay? So if I make a dent in such a little time, it's because I've been wearing it. You know, it's because it's it has made an impression. Um, and I knew it would, that's why I got the fragrance. I have tried it maybe 10 times before buying it. That's what I always do nowadays. I try things a lot before I commit to a bottle because I don't exactly need more fragrances, do I? But Rose Barbar, if you enjoy rose, if you enjoy some complexity, if you enjoy some elegance, try this one out. Then lastly, we have a fragrance that is by Prada, and I like Prada fragrances. I actually think that they are, they have their own style, which is soapy, makes me think about Tuscany, Tuscan soaps. This one, though, is <laughs> probably their least soapy. It's like I say one thing, but then I actually am showing something else. This is Amber by Prada. You can get it for an affordable price. This is the 30 mil that I have. And for such a simple composition, this is in essence a patchouli and amber. And that's it. It's patchouli amber, but with this Prada twist, okay? This Prada flair. And I've loved this one for years. The first time I smelled it, I was like, wow, that is so elegant, but I wasn't ready for it. Came back, let's say 10 years later, <laughs> and I was ready for it. So yeah, it is a mature scent in my opinion. I don't see my younger sister wearing this fragrance. Maybe she will in 10 years time, who knows? <laughs> but this is, yeah, mature, sophisticated, and it doesn't necessarily have anything feminine about it. It's It's very like, clear, clean. The Prada Amber, this is for women, by the way. The Prada Amber for man is also good, but this one I find to be even more neutral, like gender neutral. If you enjoy Amber and Patchouli and that combination, personally, I love Amber and Patchouli, then try this one out. And that's that. My five love fragrances and my five hate fragrances. I really hope that nobody, you know, got pissed off about this video. <laughs> I do want to feel some sort of freedom when it comes to me sharing my opinions. So I hope that you appreciate that. And I will catch you in my next video. I would also really love to tag some people. I'd love to tag Jus de Rose from Abbey with Love, The Sentinel, Cherie, The Top Note. <laughs> there are a lot of these like profiles where I know their name. I don't know. I just think about them as their name and then I forget their actual profile name. But these are the people that I tag. Anyone else who would like to do this tag, please keep it going. I found it fun. Let's see when this video airs if I still think it was fun. <laughs> and I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching as always. Bye.